Have you ever wondered why some people are super successful in their lives and some people are still dragging their feet while we all got the same amount of 24 hours in a day and we were blessed with the same common sense? There could be several reasons, like it could be the lack of vision, lack of motivation, lack of action, and one of the key components of that is lack of belief. Let's talk about this belief system, how the belief system is formed and how we are forming this uh, self-limiting uh, beliefs and how you can overcome those. Let's get right into it. The belief system in your subconscious is formed based on the information that you are feeding to your subconscious. If you look at any situation, the more information that you are feeding into your subconscious, it is creating the patterns and drawing conclusions out of that patterns. For example, if you asked your uh, friend to go out for a movie on a coming weekend and let's say your friend is saying that hey you know what I'm tied up this weekend he did not say that he'll not be able to make it to the movie but you can automatically derive the conclusion that he will not be able to make it to the movie because uh, your subconscious has enough information and enough evidence that the moment your friend says that he will uh, he will be tied up this weekend and the guests are coming in your uh, subconscious is able to draw the pattern that he is tied up, he will not be able to make it. So that's why it's very important to look at the beliefs that you are forming in your brain. And more often than not, when somebody says that you will not be able to achieve it and this is going to be hard for you and this is not your cup of tea, all that, that is going to create patterns and that is going to create these limiting beliefs in yourself. And this is where majority of the people got stuck on that limiting beliefs and not able to perform to the uh, highest potential they possibly can. One simple example is, yesterday I was at a pool with my daughter. She's 10 year old and uh, she is swimming with a single hand. She is holding with her left hand, she is holding the nose and with the right hand she is um, swimming. And I asked her why? And she was saying that if I don't close my nose, the water gets inside. Then I have to sit with her and tell her that, hey, let's do a simple exercise. I think you can do better than that, but let's do a simple exercise. Lift your hands and go down the water and see if you can stay there for five seconds. She did that. Both the hands up and went into the water, wait for five minutes, uh, five seconds. And I told her, can you do it for 10 seconds? Yes, she has done it. Can you do it for 15 seconds? Yes, she has done it. And can you do it for 30 seconds? she was able to do that 30 seconds. Then I told her, see, you will be able to hold the breath. When you hold the breath, water will not go inside your nose. Then I asked her, okay, now you know that the water is not going to go into your nose, can you try swimming? When she jumps into the water, her hand automatically went down to the nose, she closed and she uh, swam. That's because her subconscious is trained enough to a point that the moment she gets into the swimming, she has to hold her nose. Then I have to slowly tell her that, okay, let's do this exercise. You're in the water. Instead of closing your nose, let's do one thing. And instead of using your hands for swimming, use just your legs and put your hands like this and try to swim across. Would you be able to do that? And I want to do it just for a little bit of distance. Then she did that for a little bit distance, first time, second time, third time. When she has done that, she is like, okay, I think I got the hang of it. Now, she was able to start swimming with the hands slowly without touching her nose. And after some time, she was able to swim, she was able to jump into the water, she was able to swim without touching her nose at all. She was able to hold the breath and be able to swim with her hands, with her legs. And after she's done with the swimming, I took her on a walk and I asked her, hey, how does that feel? It felt great. And I told her, what are you going to do tomorrow? I can't wait to get into the water again. So, the word she said is, I'm super proud of myself. You see that? The moment whenever you overcome that limiting beliefs, that is going to give you that sense of achievement that, okay, I was having this uh, limiting belief that I will not be able to do it. Now I'm, ab I'm able to overcome that I achieved something. This is very, very important. We adults, we were also forming knowingly or unknowingly these self-doubts uh, self, uh, and self-limiting uh, beliefs. I want you to pay close conscious attention and see what are your limiting beliefs. So that call is for uh, the time for action. I want you to write down 
the list of limiting beliefs and list of self doubts that you have knowingly unknowingly that you have created in your life write them down and come up with a strategy about how you are planning to overcome because you need to either tell yourself or you need to have somebody who can tell you that hey you are better than what you are today you can do better so you need to have somebody tell you constantly and you need to make that conscious effort to overcome that limiting belief when you do that you're going to be a totally a different person you're going to operate at the highest possible level and you will be able to achieve the highest possible success that you deserve i hope you found this information helpful there's one more video that i have prepared recently about the power of words and that video is going to take you through how your words that you're using day to day life are going to define your destiny if you find the value uh, out of this video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel and i'll see you with the next video bye now